we'll start by having a play around with Live. This will give you an overview of how everything works and allow you to get a feel for the program. Although this tutorial will touch upon the parts of Live that are specifically aimed at DJs, it also gives you an idea of how Live is used by other musicians as a production tool. All of the functions that are introduced here will be explained in greater depth later. When you first open a new set, you'll see that there's two tracks with the labels Audio and MIDI. MIDI is a music programming language, and while we look at MIDI later on, for the most part it's not used when DJing, and so we will be focusing predominantly on audio. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the First Steps Live set, and this is available within the Ableton DJ course download. As you watch the tutorial, you should try each of the functions introduced for yourself. To open the Live Set, select File and then choose Open Live Set. Now navigate to the folder where the Ableton DJ course download is saved on your computer, double click on First Steps Project and then double click on First Steps. This will open the Live Set, ready for you to start playing with. The first view that you see this project in is Session View. Laid out over the screen are a number of short audio clips, which each play a different part of music. To start a clip playing, click on the triangular play button to the left of it. This clip will now keep on going until I click the sample below it, which will start the next clip playing, but will stop any other clip playing in that vertical track. Next, I can click on the first clip in the second track. This now plays in addition to the first clip. Each of these tracks can be thought of as a separate deck. It's only possible to play one thing on each deck at a time, but you can play many different decks at the same time. To stop a clip from playing, either select any other clip on the same track or any stop button. What you may have noticed is that regardless of when you press play, all the clips stay perfectly in time with one another. This function is called quantization and the way it works will be explained later. Essentially, it doesn't matter how bad your timing is, whenever you trigger a clip, it will start perfectly in time at the beginning of the next bar. You can launch all of the clips in a horizontal row at one time by clicking on the play buttons in the far right column. This is called launching a scene. Scenes can be used to organize your clips into logical sections. For example, the first scene could contain all the clips for your intro, the next scene could contain the verse section, and the next scene could be the chorus. The clips in tracks 1 to 4 are set so that they'll automatically start in time with live and will continue to loop until they're stopped. Whereas the samples used in track 5 are one-shot samples and these are set up so that they'll just play once. This one-shot sample here is set up so that when it's triggered, it'll start instantly. The best way to get used to using Live is to play with it. Have a good mess around with triggering clips and scenes in different combinations to get used to using Session View. When you've had enough, you can stop Live by pressing the stop button in the transport bar at the top. Now that we've started to get a feel for what you can do in Session View, I'm going to record a short improvised section and use that to have a look at the other main part of Live, the Arrangement View. Press the Stop Clips button to ensure that all clips are stopped and then press the Record button. Live's now ready to go and recording will begin as soon as any clip is launched. Stop and switch over to look at Arrangement View. You can reach Arrangement View 
either by pressing the button here or by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. In Arrangement View, everything is laid out like in a traditional sequencer program, such as Cubase, Logic or Pro Tools. Tracks are laid out horizontally across the screen, with the track names on the right hand side. In the main part of the screen you can see the clips that I've just played from Session View, laid out across the timeline. Time is measured in either bars and beats along the top, or minutes and seconds along the bottom. It's possible to see exactly when each clip was started, and how many bars of each clip were played. Along the top of the screen is the clip overview. This allows you to change which part of the screen you're viewing. To zoom in, hover the mouse over it until it becomes a magnifying glass, and then click and pull downwards. You can also pull the clip overview left or right to see different parts of the arrangement. Right, let's listen to what has been recorded. Either press the play button up at the top, or press spacebar. You can see that as the song plays, a marker moves along the screen to show you whereabouts you are in the arrangement. Now that the performance has been recorded, I can edit the clips in arrangement view. If you want to extend how long a clip plays for, hover your mouse over the coloured bar until the square bracket appears, and then adjust it to the length that you want. You can use cut, copy and paste in the same way that you would with a word processor program, and there are a number of other editing functions that can be accessed through the right click menu. You've now seen a little of how Live is used in each of its two main views. Session view is more suited to triggering parts in a live situation. It can be used to improvise, experiment and perform with. Most DJs will use session view when performing live. Arrangement view is more suited to testing out mixes and sets, creating your own remixes and writing your own tracks. As you get more used to using Live, you'll find that each view is useful in different ways and you should try to become confident with using both. Now, let's have a look around the rest of the main screen and see how the rest of Live's functions are laid out. At the bottom left, there's a triangular button which opens and shuts Info view. This is a really handy function that allows you to quickly learn your way around the program. Simply hover your mouse over any part of the screen and the Info View button will give a description of what that function does. The browser section can be opened or shut by clicking on the triangular icon on the top left. The browser is where you choose MIDI instruments and effects to use and is also where you can select audio files to use in your project. The triangular button at the bottom right of the screen opens and shuts Detail View. This part of the screen changes context depending on what you click on. If you double click on an audio clip, then you'll see Clip View, which is where you can adjust all of the settings relating to that individual audio clip. In a similar way, if you click on a MIDI clip, it will display all the settings for that. Next to the triangular button is a tab which opens up the Track View Selector. This is the part of the screen where you place any instruments or effects that you want to use with the track. To demonstrate, let's find a filter effect to use with our samples. I'm going to go back to Session View, and then click on the Master Track. Next, I'll select the second icon down in the Browser section, and then select Audio Effects, and then Auto Filter. I'm going to choose the preset Cut O Move and then drag it into the part of the screen where it says Drop Audio Effects here. I can now set a scene playing and then mess around adjusting the filter by moving the yellow circle on the screen. Later in the course we look at how you can assign effects to each hardware controller so that you can control effects like this with physical knobs instead of having to use the mouse. On the right hand side of the screen, there are a number of icons which you can use to open various settings. In I.O. you can assign the inputs and outputs. S and R is where send and return effects are set up. The next icon opens up the mixer section. D sets up track delays. And the X icon opens the DJ crossfader. Let's try using Live's crossfader. Set tracks 1 and 2 to A at the bottom, and set tracks 3, 4 and 5 to B. 
Now, when a scene is started, you can experiment with moving Live's crossfader from left to right. If we look at Live's crossfader and all of the other functions introduced here in much greater detail in the sections later on. This is the end of the first steps tutorial.